I wanted to know if the latest AI technology could teach me how to spin yarn. I thought I could make a fun video and say, look how far it missed the mark. But the more I played around with the technology, the more I became seriously, and I mean deeply concerned about the impact this will have, not only for the spinning community, but for everyone. Whether you are seeking out AI technology to use it and play with it and ask it questions or whatever generate art right now, or whether you have no idea what that is, what everyone's talking about. If you're on the internet, you are encountering it in ways that you probably won't even recognize and we need to talk about that. Chat GPT looks like this. <laughs> it is an AI it's a computer program, you can ask it questions, and it generates text that is designed, meant, programmed to look human in nature. So can it teach me how to spin? I'm going to spoil it for you right now. The answer is yes and no. It clearly has limitations, but its capabilities are astonishing. And the implications of this technology are vast. AI technology is affecting the yarn, spinning, fiber art, and all craft communities right now. It's knocking at our door. And we all, regardless of our interest in AI, I can't stress this enough, we need to be talking about it. My first version of this video was that I was going to say, you know, how do I spin yarn with a spinning wheel? And then whatever it generated, I was going to follow that, you know, to the letter, to the T, and pretend I was a beginner. and figure out how to spin yarn just asking it questions, but the deeper I got into the experiment, the more I kept thinking about the power of this technology and how little discourse I'm seeing about it within the fiber art space. Now here comes ChatGPT and all of these art-generated AI art programs to mash things up with no care for the context in which those things are coming from. And that's beyond copyright. That's beyond the vision of the artist that it's drawing from. This, this has some ramifications to touch things that are uh, even further beyond that, like collective heritage types of things that are, um, that should remain within the context of their cultures. So there's a lot here. And that whole video was turning into a deep thoughts with Evie. I realized that I had to scrap the fun experiment idea. We need to have a conversation about AI technology and how it is changing. Like right now, it is changing online content creation. Maybe forever. I'm setting up to film this video right now. This is an app that I downloaded um, just to show you what I'm talking about here. So... Uh, this is uh, like a teleprompter thing. You can put a script in here and read from it and make a video, right? So if I go to new script right there, do you see what it says? Okay, so let's generate a script with AI. And uh, we have all kinds of different things here. Oh my goodness, look. Let's do YouTube shorts. And I want to talk about... Um, let's say best spinning wheel for new yarn spinners. Okay. And now done. And then we have tone of voice. Um, let's make it funny. <clears throat> the language is English and look, we're going to generate a script right now. There it goes. This is so powerful. It's, it's absolutely astonishing how powerful this is. It says, be patient. Our robots are working on generating your script. We're being patient. Maybe I'll time lapse this bit so we don't have to wait so long. Oh, here it comes. Look at that. It's writing a script for me right there. It's writing a script for me. It even tells opening shot when to cut. Look at that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so here you can pause and read what it wrote, 
but it just generated this script. And here's the thing, it doesn't mention any specific spinning wheel yet. But what happens, and, and I'm, I'm saying this just generally, what happens when companies start to pay to have their results be the one that comes out as best? And what happens when, um, you know, everyone can just generate scripts like this to talk about things where it does give more information that might be misleading for new folks coming into a hobby or a craft or inaccurate or misrepresenting. That's what we're gonna talk about in this video right now because these tools are everywhere now. It's on the app that I use to schedule my Instagram posts called Tailwind and now I can have it AI generate captions for me if I click a little button that says Ghostwriter. Um, this is, it will generate entire blog post articles for you. It will create an entire uh, it will make knitting patterns like you can ask it for a knitting pattern and it will give you one. we're going to talk about all of this because this has huge implications all right i, I guess i should get back to my plan that came from here <laughs> not there <laughs> for how to make this video because my uh reflex is to just go weird and creative in ways that robots can't so that's what I'm gonna do. We're just gonna get weird and creative to outsmart the robots. So, yeah, back to the show. I think it's important to say up front that while the craft we do when we spin yarn is an ancient one, the space we do it in is a modern one. We as spinners are no less influenced by AI and modern technology of the internet than anyone else in any other niche. It's already here and ignoring it only means that we're going to rob ourselves of the time and opportunity to have conversations, important conversations about the implications and what it means for our community. In this video, when I say content creation, I'm referring to anything that is available because it's been posted on the internet. And that can be anything that is typed, audio recorded, photographed, or video recorded. It doesn't matter if you have a large audience or if you're just posting for your closest friends and family. When you put something on the internet, whether it's monetized or not, it's content. And unlike humans who only have the mental capacity and time to sort through and read so much content each day, AI has the power to sort through all of it. Even if you came to me right now, after living under a rock, and that rock was in a dark cave, and as far as possible from any Wi-Fi signals, and that you were just there living your best roly-poly centipede life, and you emerged from under that rock and came out of that cave, walked straight to the local coffee shop, turned on a computer and came to this video, you are interacting with AI content. The first conversations I saw taking place around the new and emerging capabilities of AI art generation was in art, <laughs> of course, <laughs> visual digital media. It isn't creating something out of thin air, it's creating a mashup, if you will, of the data that it was already given and then generating something based off of all of that information. The problem with the art that AI was generating was that the art had a particular style to it, a particular look. You know how when you look at a piece of artwork, sometimes you can identify the artist just by the style of the artwork? It's because that artist has put their unique voice into that visual medium. Well, there was a problem when AI started to generate art. A lot of people looked at that art and said, hey, that reminds me of such and such artist. And it turns out that AI was given a whole lot of data to learn from, and that included 
the bodies of work of these actual human artists. And AI was taking that work and mashing it up to generate something new. See, AI doesn't have its own thoughts, its own opinions, its own commentary. It doesn't have its own unique vision. It just mashes up what it's been fed and spits it out according to very complex algorithms. The human artist can emerge with their own style, their own vision, their own uniqueness. And as of now, AI is not capable of that level of uniqueness, at least for now. But regardless of the vision or message or voice that's put into the artwork, AI generated art is getting better and better and better. And in some cases, people are using AI generated art because they can just grab that off the internet and have it generated with an element that they want to have in it rather than paying for a human artist to create that artwork. And AI art is affecting artists' jobs. This is all AI generated art. I wanted to point out that I think perhaps the reason we haven't seen as much conversation around fiber art as we have around visual, like, flat <laughs> 2D kind of art is possibly because fiber artists are feeling a little bit secure in the fact that what we create is physical. We make it with our hands, and AI literally has no hands. But that doesn't mean <laughs> that we should be sleeping on this conversation. When I was creating my first version of this video, I asked ChatGPT, how do I spin yarn from wool with my shacked ladybug spinning wheel? The first part of the instructions that it generated were fine. A lot of it was really close to being fine. <sighs> Creepily. The first part of the instructions for spinning that it generated said, choose your fiber. Wool is a common choice for beginners. Great, let's start with wool. In that moment, I was pretending to be a beginner. And so I thought, well, if I'm a beginner and I know nothing about wool types, I better ask it, what breed of wool is a good beginner friendly wool to spin? Or something like that. ChatGPT returned a list of five results. Number one, Corydale. Corydale wool is a popular choice for beginners. It's a medium soft wool that is easy to spin and has good elasticity. And it went on to list other popular breeds of wool for beginners, including Merino, which it also gave the caveat that Merino might be a challenge for beginners. And I was blown away by that. So next, I asked ChatGPT what its sources were for giving me those recommendations. And it said, the information I provided about suitable wool choices for beginning spinners is based on general knowledge and recommendations from the crafting and spinning community. These recommendations are commonly shared among spinners and can be found in various spinning resources, books, online forums, and websites dedicated to fiber arts. Let's go see what information is publicly available on websites dedicated to fiber arts, shall we? Oh, look. That result looks familiar. Let's see what Jillian Eve has to say on her blog about the best fibers for beginners. And there is where I say that Corydale is my number one choice. And the other thing that I find fascinating is if you scroll down, I talk about how Merino can be a difficult fiber choice for beginning spinners. And this is the point where I started to wonder if I was the artist who saw their own style being reflected in the AI generated art. I can't say that ChatGPT stole my opinion about Corydale being a good beginner fiber for new spinners. Certainly it's not a hot take and I'm not the only spinner who has that opinion. It's quite possible that it did a deep search, 10 pages deep and correlated all of the responses that it found and Corydale won the opinion poll. That's possible. 
And that right there is the real problem. Because when I offer an opinion to the spinning community, I am accountable for that opinion to the spinning community. When I chose Corydale to be my number one recommended fiber on that blog post, I could have chosen something much more fancy and expensive and put affiliate links on it and tried to make some extra money, but I didn't. I chose Corydale specifically because it is an affordable option. A lot of new spinners come into the craft and they become sticker shocked very quickly because all of the equipment and suggested tools and fibers and everything, it's not cheap necessarily, but it doesn't have to be expensive either. When I started spinning, my family was living in poverty and I know what that struggle is. So when I listed that as number one, I wanted to make sure that I was offering something that would be accessible for new spinners, not just to have success with their spinning, but to also have financial accessibility to this craft because that's important to me. That's a value I have that's based on my own lived experience. And ChatGPT doesn't have values. It doesn't have lived experiences. And it can't be held accountable to the information it provides because it's not even going to cite its sources. And that is concerning. All right, that's it. We solved the problem. Just don't go to OpenAI, don't type any questions into chatbot, and we'll be fine. Just don't ask it anything. I mean, maybe one of us could ask it how to solve climate change, but let's just turn off the lights, let it sit in its corner of the internet, and we can all just go about our spinning and be fine. Whew! Dodged one there. The end. Earlier this week, I asked ChatGPT to give me a blog post about the best supported spindles. Here is the introduction to the blog it wrote for me. I posted the full thing on my Patreon to get some thoughts from my patrons. Miranda described it as insincere writing, and to me, that was such a perfect description. I described it as feeling like I was reading an essay written by a kid who didn't read the whole book but knew the characters and was just trying to reach their word count. Other people said it felt hollow, and I'm pretty certain everyone was immediately able to recognize that the writing was not written by me, but you all know my voice, so you won't be easily fooled. Here's the thing about it that really struck me. It was almost accurate. It would only take a tiny bit of tweaking to fix the technical inaccuracies, sprinkle in a bit of spice to give some personality to the writing, and it would be indistinguishable from a blog written by a human from scratch. Add some affiliate links and maybe a sponsor, and we are now a content writing powerhouse that can earn us a paycheck. This is literally how online blogs work, but now, because chat GPT not only does the writing for you, it does the research too. The reduction in labor and effort feels like the difference between a spinning wheel and a spinning jenny. And it doesn't stop with blog posts. I can ask it to write Instagram captions, YouTube tutorial video scripts, Facebook posts, knowledge base articles, knitting patterns. I asked it to write a weaving pattern for twill napkins on a four shaft loom, and it did. It wasn't as complex as my recent napkins, and I've seen it generate some pretty wonky sweater patterns um, and a weirdly endearing crochet narwhal over on the clock app. But give it time, this technology is still a toddler, and believe me when I say it is learning. In the last year, we had some new faces wandering off the internet into the knitting community. Their stated goal was to start a knitting website that people would turn to for information about knitting. And while searching that info, people would purchase their recommended knitting supplies that they sold. They openly and rather boldly explained their strategy on their own business podcast while dismissing all the knitting teachers they had researched as grannies with out-of-date blogs. We all have to make money. We all have to eat. 
but there's a difference to me between a small business that invests into the community they are a part of and a business that extracts all the money they can out of a community and then moves on. And I wonder what those knitting bros are doing with ChatGPT right now. In the right hands, used carefully, AI is an incredibly powerful tool for content creators. As a neurodivergent person myself, the ability to type in a question and get an answer without having to engage with all the distractions of the internet is so, so powerful. Let me explain how it is for me. I can't venture into the internet without accepting that I am going to end my time there with at least 20 tabs open, music coming from somewhere, probably a video playing, a minimum of three new side quests, and something in the mail that I won't remember until it shows up at the door. It's a new spindle. To create a framework of writing that I can start with as a foundation to shape into my own unique ideas and voice, it's game changing. Think of it like this. Have you ever had to write something and all you could do is stare at a blank page? Now think about trying to write something but you already have a paragraph to get you started. You just have to make it yours. This is a tool that needs to be recognized for the accessibility it's going to provide for so many people. We are only just beginning to see the ways that AI can be used as assistive technology for people's benefit. And that is not a small thing. With a tool this powerful, people will also be harmed. I cannot say this loudly enough. As soon as chat GPT was unveiled or unleashed on the world, however you look at it, marginalized communities immediately began to speak about the dangers and harm that this technology will cause. Let's talk about some things I noticed when I was playing around with AI for this video. First of all, I only had minimally melanated people appearing in the images it generated for like the first 80 or more images. It took a long time before I saw anyone who wasn't as white as me. When you have collective media that vastly overrepresents certain people and underrepresents other people, and then you give that body of data to an AI to generate more data from, you will have results that reflect the inherent biases of the data you gave it. How will this negatively impact our global community of yarn spinners, knitters, weavers, crocheters, and other fiber artists? Well, I asked Dolly, that's the visual sort of companion to chat GPT. It generates images instead of texts. It's what I've used for my transitions throughout this video. I asked it for an oil painting of a woman spinning flax with a spindle in a field with sheep in the Middle Ages. And I got several images back from that request. One of the images shows someone in a field wearing what appears to be a medieval kirtle and apron. However, their spinning is not a medieval European spinning technique. It appears to me that they are spinning with a large supported spindle and a Rolag, reminiscent of traditional Navajo spinning techniques. Chat GPT doesn't see boundaries of culture or heritage. It doesn't understand that certain textiles cannot be divorced from their cultural context because textiles and culture are one and the same. With the power to reproduce information on a scale we have never seen before, which will then get fed back into the AI and then fed more AI results, you see where the problem is, right? It, it will reinforce biases and stereotypes, and it has the potential to astronomically proliferate misrepresentations, and this is so harmful. 
I typed the question, what is Andy implying into ChatGPT? And it gave me a convoluted set of steps that involved wrapping yarn around my hand. Of course it did, because for years, spinners, mostly in English speaking countries, have been writing articles, blog posts, and making tutorials calling the hand wrapping trick of finishing off a little bit of yarn from a bobbin or spindle Andy implying. However, that is not the plying technique primarily done by Andean spinners. And by calling it Andean plying, it gives the impression that it is the technique of choice. It is misrepresenting precious Andean textile traditions that have survived global industrialization against all odds. The next one I typed in was, what is Navajo plying? Because the same issue applies here as well. ChatGPT gave me a description of chain plying, and yet again, this term is flat out wrong. Navajo weaving does not use three-plied yarn with that structure. We are not honoring Navajo weavers by putting their name on spinning techniques that don't represent their traditions. Words matter. Language matters. Now, maybe more than ever. When ChatGPT and other AI programs proliferate erroneous terms over time, and people in the future are researching information about textiles, what do you think AI will generate for them? Like it or not, we're going to find out, because if we use the internet, we are all participating in a very grand experiment right now. And what about history? I asked ChatGPT to tell me the significance of cables in Gainsey sweaters, and it returned to me a whole lot of information about Aaron sweaters, which are not really the same thing, are they? <laughs> so what happens when people don't fact check the results that they get from G ChatGPT, or if they do fact check them, they're checking it against other content that people have generated that was generated with errors that were not fact-checked. It becomes the potential for self-perpetuating a lot of misinformation. And as textile artists, we know that there is nuance, especially historically, where we have very little information in some cases, that we need to be really careful stays clear. Aaron sweaters and Gainsey sweaters do have significant differences if you know what you're looking at. I have ancestors who lived in Ireland, and I have ancestors who lived in Scotland. If I'm learning their history, my history, I want that history to be accurate. Cyber friends, we are the caretakers of our crafts and the heritage they carry with them. It really feels like it's too late to put the lid back on Pandora's box at this point. These technologies are here and they will only become more integrated into our lives as they advance. The app I use to schedule my Instagram posts, Tailwind, now has a button I can click called Ghostwriter that will generate captions and hashtags for me if I ask it to. It is ChatGPT, or one of its siblings, no doubt. Content creators in every niche are already starting to use AI tools, and they're being integrated into the tools that we already use. And I personally feel there needs to be more transparency around that. Where are we getting the information that we are sharing with our audiences? This technology doesn't have to be evil, but it won't accidentally become benign either. And maybe I'm just too much of an optimist thinking that way, but I'd rather not give up entirely. I'd rather move forward with conversation, and I hope we can start that here. So be kind to each other in the comment section. We're all learning about this, and if you're watching this in the future, things might have changed, I don't know. But my hope is that 
since we know AI is going to amplify the information that we give it, that we can work together to give it accurate information that fully represents our beautiful, diverse, and culturally vibrant communities and be vigilant to quickly fix errors in our body of textile knowledge as we share it with each other in online spaces. But doing that has to be done carefully as well. What we talk about here now will become the data that feeds the future versions of AI. We need to really be cognizant of that. Well, it's time to go welcome my new AI overlords. <laughs>